In this video, we're going to talk about using the second derivative test to find a local maximum and minimum. And what the second derivative test is, um, first off, you find your critical numbers. So c is going to denote a critical number. And remember, a critical number is a point in the domain of the original function where the derivative either equals 0 or, whether, or where the derivative is undefined. The idea is we put those points into the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, then that point gives you a local minimum. And the way you can kind of remember that, remember if the second derivative is positive, that means it's concave upwards. Um, if it was a critical number, let's suppose that the derivative equaled 0 at that point. Well, that means it's either topping out or sort of bottoming out. And with this concavity, that means it must be bending upwards. So you would, in fact, have a local minimum. Likewise, it says if the second derivative is negative, then that point is going to give you a local maximum. And again, for the same reason, if the derivative is 0, but it's concave down, that's what the second derivative being negative means, you will have a local maximum. And if the second derivative equals 0, it says anything could have happen. You could have a local maximum. You could have a local minimum. Um, in that case, to figure out your local maximums and minimums, you would just have to go back and use the first derivative test. So let's do an example here. Suppose I have the function x over x squared plus 4. Well, the first thing I'll have to do is take my derivative. So it says we get the bottom part times the derivative of the top, which will just be 1, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of x squared plus 4 is just going to be 2x. All over the denominator squared. So if I keep simplifying here, I'm going to have x squared minus 2x squared. That's going to give me negative x squared plus 4. And on the bottom, I have x squared plus 4 quantity squared. So in this case, now we're going to have to figure out the critical numbers. And again, the critical numbers are where it's undefined or where it equals 0. There's nothing that's going to make the denominator equal 0, which means there's nothing that's going to make it undefined. Again, if we set the, excuse me, the derivative equal to 0, that means the numerator will have to equal 0. And if I flip the signs, if I multiply both sides of this by negative 1, I'll get positive x squared minus 4 equals 0. I can factor that down to x minus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. So my critical numbers are going to be positive and negative 2. And those are certainly points in the domain of the original function. So those will, in fact, be critical numbers. All right, now the next thing it says that I have to do is I have to take the second derivative, all right, and then um, basically plug these numbers in to see if I get a maximum, or, or excuse me, to see if the der second derivative is positive or negative, And that'll tell me whether I have a maximum or a minimum. So again, here's my first derivative that I found just a second ago. So let me rewrite that up here. So I'm going to have, and I'm going to rewrite this as 4 minus x squared all divided by x squared plus 4 quantity squared. So if I use the quotient rule on this one, along with the chain rule again, the second derivative, it says you get the bottom, so x squared plus 4 squared. So the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is negative 2x, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So I'll have 2 times x squared plus 4. And then I'll have to multiply that by 2x, if I can squeeze that in there. And that's all going to be over the denominator squared, which is going to make that to the fourth power now. And I'm going to clean up the numerator here a little bit because um, I don't want to start plugging these numbers in here just yet. It looks like a little bit of a mess to me. So I've got really not much to simplify on the first term in the numerator. Maybe I'll, well, I'll do it again in a second. I'm mainly looking at the second part here. 
I've got a 2 times a 2x. I'll leave my minus sign alone. So I've got minus 4x, then 4 minus x squared. And sorry, I'm just thinking here for a second. I left out something. I've got my x squared plus 4 in there. That's what I was thinking about. I thought that should be in there somewhere. Then I have x squared plus 4 to the fourth in the denominator. So notice if I clean this up a little bit more, I've got an x squared plus 4 in both terms. I can factor that out. I've also got an x and an x. I can factor that out. I can even factor out the negative 2. So I'm going to factor out the negative 2x. I'm going to factor out one of the x squared plus 4s. And then I'm going to be left with inside the parentheses an x squared plus 4 term. I'm going to need a positive 2. And then I'm going to need a 4 minus x squared. Again, that's all over the denominator. Make sure I haven't done anything crazy here. I feel like I have, but I think it's okay. All right, I think it's looking okay. I've got an x squared plus 4 on top. I'm going to cancel that out with 1 on the bottom, so I'll be left with a power of 3. So I've got negative 2x. And then if I simplify down on the inside, I'll have a negative 2x squared plus x squared. It's going to give me a negative x squared term. I've got a plus 4 and a plus 8. That'll give me a plus 12. And then on the bottom, x squared plus 4 to the third. So again, you don't have to do this simplification. Um, certainly good algebra practice, so you know it never hurts to do that. Um, but you know maybe it's a little unnecessary on an exam so if you didn't have to do it don't do it but like I said I think it's okay so again this is my second derivative the two critical numbers I found were positive 2 and negative 2 so now it says I need to plug those into the second derivative so if I plug in 2 here I'm gonna get negative 4 so if I plug 2 in here, I'll get 4, but that'll make it a negative. Negative 4 plus 8, or excuse me, negative 4 plus 12 is 8. And on the bottom, um, again, since I'm squaring and adding 4, the term on the bottom is always going to be positive, so I don't even really care what it is, because all I'm really interested in is the fact that this is going to give me a negative number. Well, a negative number is less than 0, and that means that 2 comma f of 2, whatever that y coordinate is, since it's less than 0, that means this is a local maximum. And now it says I also need to plug in negative 2 to see what happens there. And notice really the only thing that's going to change is the negative 2x is going to turn into a positive 4 term. Still, when I square the negative 2 at the very beginning, I'll get 4. Then it's going to become negative. Plus 12, I'll get 8. And again, on the bottom, it's always going to be positive. So this is some positive number, which is greater than 0. And that means that negative 2 comma f of negative 2 is going to be a local minimum in this case. OK, so again, the basic idea, you have to take the first derivative. Got to find that first derivative, which is what we did here got to find your critical numbers and again that's by setting the derivative equal to zero which means you set the numerator of your fraction equal to zero to figure out where it's undefined we set the denominator equal to zero but there's nothing that's going to make the denominator zero in this case after that we have to go back and now take the second derivative and assuming I didn't make any mistakes here on my second derivative I went ahead and cleaned it up. Obviously, you could go ahead and plug it in right here. You know, once you've got the second derivative, you can plug in positive two, you can plug in negative two, and be off and running. Um, you know, really, that arithmetic would not be that tedious. So it probably would be honestly uh, quicker just to go ahead and do it right off the bat. But just for practice' sake, here's a little bit of uh, algebra review. So I cleaned this up and, and factored it down a little bit more. And once I had it cleaned up to a point to where I really thought, 
you know, I don't want to simplify it much more. Um, at that point, you again simply just plug in. Where'd my. I've lost my numbers here. Um, you just plug in. Well, they're gone now. You just plug in the first derivative. You plug those numbers into the first derivative. You plug them into the second derivative. You see if you get a positive number out, and you see if you get a negative number out. And depending on what you get, again, if the second derivative is positive, that means you have a local maximum. If the second derivative is negative, that means you have a, excuse me, if the second derivative is positive, that means you have a local minimum. If the second derivative is negative, that means you have a local maximum. And then you're done. So sorry to lose the last little bit of that page here. I really don't know where it just went on me. It flew out the window. But anyways, I think you got it all there. I sure hope so. You can always rewatch the video, and, and it's all there. So if you've got other questions or want to see some other examples worked out, take a look at my website, justmathtutoring.com. There's a nice uh, listing of a whole bunch of videos. Feel free to watch them as often as you want. And got a bunch of topics on there and a bunch of examples worked out. I hope these help. I hope this example wasn't too hard to follow.